Hi, this video is going to go over how to calculate heating degree days and cooling degree days. We've already discussed this slide where a heating degree day is a measurement that's designed to reflect the demand for energy needed to heat a building. So we're going to see today how we can calculate this from measurements of outside air temperature. The same thing is for cooling degree days, it tries to measure the amount of cooling um, energy, the amount of energy use that's going to be related to cooling. So let's look at how to calculate this. And what we're going to focus on right now is if we have hourly measurements of temperature, how we're going to calculate heating degree days and cooling degree days. First off, we're going to use the same base for heating degree days and cooling degree days. So a typical value, if you look it up, is 65 degrees. But as we discussed, the balance point temperature is much more accurate if you can find the balance point temperature of your building. Also, a, a big note is you should never, ever, ever have negative values of heating degree days or cooling degree days. And we'll see how we can correct for that in the future. So um, if we look um, for this calculation, we first see um, T hourly is the average outside temperature for a given hour. And we'll see later how the formula will change if temperature is not given hourly. But if temperature is given hourly, this is the formula we're going to use. Heating degree days equals the temperature of the base minus the hourly temperature, so T hourly, divided by 24. The same thing with cooling degree days, except that T hour, it's T hourly minus T base, and we still divide by 24. So let's look at an example. Here's an example. What are, what, we're going to calculate the heating degree days and cooling degree days for the following cases. So we're just going to do 55 degree temperature outside and as our um, always our outside temperature. And we're going to have different bases and different time periods. So let's look at the how we can solve these. So for the first one, the base of 65 degrees and 55 degrees Fahrenheit outside over one hour, we can see that the cooling degree days is always going to be negative. So we said if, if, if we get a negative number for cooling degree days, we, we get zero. Then heating degree days is um, the temperature difference between 65 and 55 degrees which is 10 degrees, and then we're going to divide by 24. And the units of heating degree days and cooling degree days is degrees Fahrenheit times days. So, um, so, that's, so that's where we go for this. Now, if we have um, the base of 65 degrees and 55 degrees outside over two hours, we see that we just do the same thing twice, and we add both of them together. So we have 10 divided by 24 for the first hour and 10 divided by 24 for the second hour. We're going to add them up. So it equals actually 20 divided by 24 um, heating degree days. So let me write that in just so we're clear. If the base is 55 degrees and it's 55 degrees outside, both heating degree days and cooling degree days is going to be zero because that the numerator is going to be zero there. If the base is 45, and it's 55 degrees outside, we're actually going to have um, three hours of um, cooling degree days, and heating degree days is going to be zero. And if we add up those three hours, the total heating cooling degree days is 30 over 24. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to show you how to do this in Excel. So if you haven't um, brushed up on if statements lately, um, that's the next thing you're going to want to do. And so I'll put a, um, this is a link to a video from one of my past students um, it's an if statement review. Um, so it's a good idea to go and watch this video if you um, are a little shaky on if statements because we're going to be using them a lot not only in this class but the whole um, energy management program and field. Okay, so the first example we're going to do is the same thing, the hourly heating degree days and cooling degree days in Excel. So um, what I'm going to show you is how to type this into Excel and how to get the heating degree days and cooling degree days over this time period. So let's go into Excel, and I want to scroll back up, or I want to scroll down because I have, I want to put the hourly ones here. So let me just type those in. So this is exactly what we had. So let's try to figure out the heating degree days and cooling degree days um, for this. So let me just first start with heating degree days. What I'm going to do is make this a little bit more. Um, easy to read first, and the heating degree days are going to equal the um, base 
minus the outside air temperature divided by 24. So we're close there. What we're going to do is make sure we have parentheses here um, to get that right. Now, I made a slight mistake, and I'll show you what that, what that is when I drag this down. So we can see that what's weird is that we should get we shouldn't get a negative number for 61 degrees outside. What actually happened in Excel is when I dragged this down, I didn't, my base is not an absolute reference. So my base um, uh, is now B31, which is not what I want. So what I want to do is make sure I go up to the first one, B30, I want to make absolute reference. And how I can do that is hit the F4 key. And then that makes it absolute reference. So then what happens when I drag this down, is that it's always going to be B30 and then it's going to be minus the outside the average outside air temperature. So now what happened though is that remember heating degree days and cooling degree days can never be negative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to instead of trying to fix this formula I'm just going to put uncorrected here. So what that means is that this is not exactly right so I need to correct it before I um, before I go on to cooling degree days. So let's start with this. So basically what I want to do is if my heating degree days is less than zero, so if it's negative, so remember an if statement is a logical test. Remember watch that video if you need to review um, if statements. So if that's true, if it's less than zero, I want to set it equal to zero. Otherwise I want to set it equal to itself. So it won't change any of the values that are above zero, but the values that are below zero it'll change to negative. So what I'm going to do is leave this um, as an exercise to you as to how to ha how you can calculate cooling degree days. But we're going to go on to a more general um, formula, a more general way of um, calculating things that's not that, given non-hourly temperatures. So let's go on to this. Now we want to look at the general heating degree day and cooling degree day calculations. So the formula looks really simple. The only thing we add in is lowercase t. And instead of um, t hourly, we're actually going to change t hourly to t average because we don't have t hourly anymore. So t average is the outside temperature average outside temperature for an amount of time. So it can be any amount of time. It can be uh, less than, it can be 10 minutes, it can be a second, it can be a day. So this is sort of a very general heating degree day and cooling degree day calculation. Um, so then what we do is we do T base minus T average divided by 24 and the only difference is we multiply by the number of hours. So if you want to think about it, this T wasn't here before because we were always looking at one hour time periods. So if this was 1, we just have the formula before it. So what I want to do is show you guys how um, to use this general formula to calculate something when we have hours of the day, when, every, when it's not hourly um, temperatures, or it's not hourly uh, data, but it's you know different time period data. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'll show you that in Excel now. So the first thing we're going to do, if I scroll up here, the first thing I'm going to do is do time difference. Okay. So what I want to do is do the time difference from the time, the current time to the time before. So it's zero for the first time. We don't know the time difference because we have no previous time. So this is the hour of the day is 0.5 here. The previous time, we don't have that. So the second thing. Um, what we're going to do now is equals this minus the previous one. So now, now you can sort of see we filled in the time difference here. Let's make this a little easier to read. So you can see that it's going from 0 0.5 to 4 is 3.5 hours. Going to 4 to 4.75 is 0.75 hours. So now we have the time difference. So now we can go to heating degree days and we're going to do undirect, uncorrected again. And again, we'll make it a little easier to read. And we're going to do our B31 
base. And remember, we're going to do the F4, so that way. Base minus the outside air temperature divided by 24. And now we just need to add the T in. So times the time difference. So again, we get we get a little bit different results. Um, but And we have negatives. So now we're going to do heating degree days. So we're going to do equals if our logical test is whether this is less than zero. If it's less than zero, we're going to set it equal to zero. Otherwise, we're going to set it equal to itself. And so that will just blank out all the non-zero, all, all the less than zero values. Okay. So um, the other thing we can do is we can to to get the whole total de degree days over the whole time period, we can sum all of that. Okay, so that's the idea. So that's sort of how you calculate heating degree days and cooling degree days. So the exercise that's going to follow this video is what you're going to do is take this data for Wilmington, Delaware, and I'll upload this to Blackboard, and you're going to calculate the total heating degree days and cooling degree days um, for this time period. So, um, so the temperatures in Celsius, so you have to figure out, you want to calculate that for Fahrenheit. And you also want to calculate any, for any base. So I could, I could plug in a base of 10 degrees Fahrenheit and you'd give me that. So what I want to show you though first is how to get this time and date in a usable format. So time and date in Excel is a little bit funny, but it's actually really nice. So I'm going to first do month. So what we can do is with, we have a lot of formulas to work with the time of date. So if we do month, and then we look at our um, date serial number, which is what that is, and we hit enter, we want to make sure this is displayed as a number. Then it'll give me the month this is it. And let's check. So let's scroll down so we can sort of see that it changes. Once it's February, it's month two. So that's what we want. So it's going to give us a number output for whatever month it is, which is nice because it's hard to work in Excel with this type of format. We want to work with this type of format. So then the same thing, we can look at year. So we do year, um, I'm sorry, so we type year. And you can see that's 2007. So month, year, we could do day, but we don't really care too much about day. But what we're really going to care about is hour. And then the other big thing is that's a little bit different than what I gave you, so you're going to have to think about this a little bit, is we want the minute of these things. So sometimes it turns out that in the beginning here that nothing has minutes. But if we scroll down, we can see that sometimes we measure at 8.30. So see how this is only a half hour? So these are not necessarily hourly readings. So you're going to have to use the general heating degree day and cooling degree formula to figure this one out. Okay, so that's how we can get all of those things. So you, I'm going to let you leave that up to you as an exercise to um, do this. So your goal for this is going to be to calculate the total amount of heating degree days and cooling degree days. And you're going to upload the spreadsheet. So you can look for the, um, the assignment online. Okay, thanks for watching this video, and hopefully it helps you out with your assignment.